I'm checking out the, the NAC T100 software and basically what it is is using a USB sound device in this case it's an M Audio Transit I've had for many years there's uh, the output going to the input of the deck and the output of the deck coming to the input and in the USB sound card setting to uh, uh, calibrate it, it's simply just setting the levels at 0 dB um, on the meters uh, that's that's all I have to do so setting it to 400 Hertz on the 1 volt range uh, at the level position and we adjust the input level for 0 dB and then we adjust the output level for zero there so we turn the output down and you can see that it, it drops away it can also be adjusted by the input uh, level on the uh, PC or laptop but having the output uh, level on the tape deck just makes it a little bit easier they're actually slightly out of sync uh, not quite left and right aren't quite equal by just a smidge but so I've adjusted the input level knob just slightly well, you can't even see it on the dial here but just to make uh, it uh, look uh, equal that will help uh, in uh, all the measurements the calibration of the tape itself I'm not too worried at the moment this is purely just to check out the the audio analyzer software we shall do a speed test using 3 kilohertz device we press play make sure it's on tape of course and you can see the level went away now we press play and we should have a there we have a, the signal coming up we move this around to speed and it should tell me okay <clears throat> it's saying there 2989 2990 so it's a little bit low I believe that uh, when that sits on zero there that it's exactly at 3 kilohertz now if we change it to 3150 uh, you can see it's uh, it's well below so yeah that seems to be working Oh, that's good, 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 good. But by adjusting that up just to zero, it's uh, really easy to uh, to see. Ah. Mind you, it's pretty close. Now, while on Flutter, I believe we can use this for... While on Flutter, so we move this to speed while on Flutter. And... Hmm, I thought that should come up with a, a meter there, so uh, uh, what am I missing? Oh. oh, okay. So I had to move that down to point 0.1. So that means that's probably point 0.1, so that's, oh okay, so that's point 0.06 not sure what the spec is meant to be I, I actually think the specs meant to be about 0 0.04 0 0.05 but uh, nonetheless it's varying between 0 0.05 and 0 0.06 so that's pretty good oh there we go it reads it there 0 0.055 oh that's excellent well it is a direct drive motor in this thing one of these frequency generated direct drives there's no belts in this at all so it should be good and it, oh it's even getting better now I saw it drop down to 0.04 something anyway that's good we'll need to uh, fix that speed up uh, at a later date right oh going well so far good good I thought while I'm here I might as well 
do the torque test, see what it comes up with. Fifty and ten. Terrific. So it's fifty gram centimetre on the uh, take up and ten gram centimetre on the uh, supply. That's that that's great. I actually should write these down. Well, before we do the next one, I'll uh, try track alignment just to see how it is. Yeah, way off. That should be equal and low on each left and right. All right. We'll leave that for the moment. Actually, while I'm here, I'll do the Dolby level, see what that shows as. Zero left, minus one on right. Okay, that'll do. It's just a rough guide at the moment, that's all. Now let's uh, try distortion. Woohoo! I think we move that to there. 400 hertz, yes. Uh, I assume we go into record. We'll just let it go. Count, counter reset so we know where we started. Okay. Well, that's saying 0.019% uh, distortion, so 0 0.02, that seems a bit, uh, a bit too good. Ah, that's why it's so good. It's on the source. <laughs> All right, well, that's what the signal is itself. Now let's go to the tape. Ah, now that's better. <laughs> ah, well. Yeah, now we now we're talking. Oh, oh that was a well, that was a lesson for me. Yeah, one percent. There you go. One percent. Apparently, the idea is that uh, you try and get below one percent. I think the spec is around about uh, 08 percent, so it's a little bit higher at four hundred. But I have not done any uh, anything on this apart from uh, calibrate the tape for uh, recording uh, with the auto-tune, that's all I've done. Um, it doesn't have a, a bias fine-tune, so I can't play with that. The only thing I could do is upset the recording reference and uh, for bias, and no, I won't do that. All right, well, that's, that's fine, 1%. That's in the right channel. Let's go to the left channel, which I believe is the the one closest to the edge of the tape. Uh, 1.1. So that's right channel, left, 1.1%. Oh, it's a very old uh, SA C90 TDK cassette, so and as I say, I haven't calibrated this uh, machine, so that's to be expected. Good. All right, let's move right along. What's the next thing we can do? Uh, we'll go to 1000 hertz and see what the distortion is like then. That's at 400 hertz, what I've already done. Uh, 1000 hertz on the left channel, it's point. Point eight. Well, let's say point eight seven. All right. Well, that's getting closer to what it should be. Right channel. Uh, point eight five again. Point eight five. Right. Yeah, left channel is just slightly higher distortion. One point by uh, yeah. 1.1% at 400 hertz. 
All right, well, that's all, all not too bad. Uh, I'd love to be able to do the signal to noise, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. But anyway, um, I'll, I'll work that out and we'll do that at the end. But what we will do now is go to the scope and let's do a free frequency suite. This is at minus 10 dB. Uh, oh, it's looking good so far. Oh, goodness, okay. Well, that's sort of dropped about 10 dB to at 20 kilohertz. Hmm. Let's go down to minus 20. Let's do it again. Here we go. There's a bit of a delay. At 20, minus 20 dB, the frequency response should be uh, a lot better. I wish I could expand the scale, but it doesn't seem to want to allow you to do that, which is a shame. Uh, it'd be nice if uh, if we could use a cursor to find out. Oh, it's doing it again. Don't know how you stop it. Uh, maybe it just does it continuously. It could well be the bias is off the auto bias or auto tuning on this uh, Denon deck uh, may not be correct. I guess that's the one failing with this, you can't change the scaling. Hmm. I think it just keeps doing it. But as a rough guide it's going from minus 25 there to 16 kilohertz it's minus 35 so so it drops about 10 dB overall so, so what's that plus or minus 5 yeah it's a, not as quite as good as I'd like but it's not bad either all right let's try uh, pink noise oh that's pretty good once again it's dropping off here Yes, uh, it'd be nice to have a to change to a machine where I could alter the uh, the bias. Oh well, let's try white noise. It's very similar, isn't it? That's about from top to bottom about ten dB, and spectrum. Let's have a look, look at that. Oh, there's a big peak at 400. Yeah, why is that? Um, it could be because this is still on. Oh, yes, okay, so let's... Uh, it's hard to grab a hold of. Let's turn it off and go back to scope. And uh, spectrum again. Yeah, there you go, it's gone, so... That's all right. So, uh, I wonder if this is how you get signal to noise. Ah, oscillator output gain. Ah, maybe that's all I needed to do was turn that off. Ah, okay. So they know that it interferes. All right. I wish I could hear it. Well, if this is to be to be to be believed, then the the noise floor is uh, minus eighty dB, minus ninety dB. 
Yeah, I doubt that. I'm just trying a few different uh, levels here to get a feel of how it's all working. Yeah. Apart from a slight roll off at the, at the high end, it's actually not too bad. It uh, certainly not, doesn't do a big dive, you know, at like 12k or anything like that. It, it's a gentle roll off and I suspect that's uh, bias adjustment anyway. As a last thing, I'll do the uh, azimuth. That looks to be at uh, 45 degrees, but uh, maybe, oh, here we go. Yes, not a very big signal. But anyway, that's at 45 degrees, so that's, that's, that's fine. All right, well, that's, that's about it. That's, uh, yeah, it's, it's. It's quite a neat uh, piece of kit. It uh, seems to do all those things. It's told me lots of good stuff. Uh, I, they, they quote that they're not really a uh, professional um, uh, doohiggy for uh, doing uh, proper, you know, professional results, but <clears throat> with a good sound card, it it does exactly what it's expected to do and oh, I'm quite pleased with it all right well um, I think that's uh, pretty much it uh, for, for this uh, nice and simple once you get the hang of it calibration is straightforward it's just setting the input level to the deck and the output level to the uh, sound card that's so that you get zero db on both just to make sure that it's within its uh, level parameters yeah yeah it's not too bad well i hope you enjoyed that uh, look at the uh, NAC t100 and uh, i will probably use it quite a bit in the future it could be quite handy for doing uh, quick measurements and also providing a little bit of documentation that it allows you to print, I believe. Must have to do just a print screen. But that's that's all right. I'm, I'm used to doing that print screen and then uh, just uh, slicing and dicing it. AnnexWaves.com via the Microsoft Store. And uh, yes, yeah, so I, I give it my tick of approval. <laughs> for what that's worth. All right, good night, folks.